Hi everyone, today we will be reading a book called Tigers. The tiger settles into the tall grass for a nap and closes his eyes. Just as he starts to doze off, he hears a no noise several yards away. The tiger settles into the tall grass for a nap and closes his eyes. Just as he starts to doze off, he hears a noise several yards away. His eyes snap open and only his head jerks up. He is careful not to reveal himself. His sharp eyes focus on the nearby watering hole. There, sipping gently, is a deer-like sandbar. The tiger is hungry. The sandbar would make a good meal. The tiger crouches low to the ground. His muscles as tense as loaded springs. He inches forward, belly close to the ground. He is so quiet that the sandbar does not hear a thing. When the tiger comes close to enough to his prey, he leaps several feet out of the grass and grabs his victim. After a sh short struggle, the sandbar is dead. The tiger drags the body to a well-hidden place and eats. His hunger will be satisfied for a few more days. <clears throat> the largest cat. The majestic tiger is the largest member of the Felidae, or cat family. Tigers can weigh up to 660 pounds and stretch 11 feet from head to tail. Even the mighty lion, with its thick mane and strong body, is smaller than the tiger. Tigers rule over a family that also includes leopards, cheetahs, and house cats. The tiger's scientific name is Panthera tigris. There are six subspecies of tiger, but all share common characteristics that make the animal distinctive and allow it to survive in its environment. The brown-orange fur lined with bold black or brown stripes helps a tiger stay camouflaged when surrounded by tall grass and thick forests. This allows tigers to sneak up on prey undetected. The tiger's thick leg muscles help it chase prey on land and even climb short distances up trees. <clears throat> its paws look like much larger versions of how cat's paws. Soft pads on the bottom of the paws help it to walk quietly. When not in use, a tiger's claws retract into its paws. The claws are used for attacking prey or other tigers. To keep claws sharp, a tiger will scratch them on a tree trunk. Tigers use the force of their large paws to knock small prey off their feet, like a boss boxer delivering a knockout punch. One of the tiger's most powerful features is its large jaws. A tiger has 30 teeth. Four long teeth called cannons jut out of the jawbone, two on top and two on bottom. These teeth, which are about three inches long, look like fangs and are used to bite into prey. The back teeth, called carnassials, are jagged and sharp and help the tiger rip meat apart. Tigers are nocturnal animals, which means they like to hunt and travel at night. They gaze intently on their world with bright yellow eyes. Tigers can see up to six times better than humans at night, and this helps them expertly track their prey. Tigers also have strong senses of hearing and smell. Tigers are found throughout Asia, from the cold, cold landscapes of eastern Russia and northern China to the steamy jungles of the island of Sumatra, and from the dry forests and mountains of India to the rivers of Cambodia. Tigers need three things to survive, a water source such as a pond or river, river places, to, places to hide such as tall grass, rock, 
rock outcroppings or forests, and plenty of prey to eat. Each species of tiger is suited to a particular region because of its fur coloring and body size. The most common tigers are Bengals. These tigers are found in the dry forests and Himalayan mountain regions of India, Nepal, Bangladesh, Bhutan, and Myanmar. Male Bengals are about nine and a half feet long and weigh up to four hundred eighty pounds. The females are slightly smaller. The fringe of white hair around a Bengal tiger's face is longer than in other species. Much more difficult to find is a completely white tiger with blue eyes and brown stripes. This beautiful white tiger is not a separate subspecies, but is a rare form of the Bengal tiger. White tigers live in captivity and have not been reported seen in the wild since the 1950s. Their color makes it impossible to hide from predators, so they do not survive for long. <clears throat> the Siberian tiger is the largest species, with males growing to nearly 11 feet long and weighing up to 660 pounds. These tigers are covered with thick fur because of where they live. The cold regions of Russia and northern China. The Siberian tiger's large body helps her retain more heat, and the fur acts as insulation against the temperatures and wind. The fur of a Siberian tiger is paler than that of other tigers, and its belly is entirely white. This helps the Siberian tiger to stay hidden in its habitat, which is often covered in snow. Snow. Its stripes are brown rather than black, and they are spaced widely apart. In Thailand, the Indo-Chinese tiger dominates. It is also found in Myanmar, Vietnam, China, Cambodia, and Laos. It is smaller than the Bengal tiger, averaging about nine feet in length and weighing up to four hundred pounds. Its fur is a bit darker than average, and and its stripes are shorter and spaced closely together. The Sumatran tiger is found only in Sumatra, a forested island of Indonesia. It is the smallest subspecies, with the male averaging about eight feet in length and weighing about. Two hundred sixty pounds. It has the darkest coat of all tigers, and its stripes are spaced closely together and extend down the forelegs. The rarest, the rarest tiger is the South China tiger, only, with only a, top, a couple dozen still living in the wild. The last reported sighting of one occurred in nineteen ninety nine. The South China tiger averages the same length as the Sumatran, but weighs up to three hundred thirty pounds. This species has short, broad stripes that are spaced far apart. In in two thousand and four, scientists discovered a new subspecies, the Malayan tiger. This tiger is found on the southern tip of Thailand and the Malaysian. Peninsula and is, and is similar in size to the Sumatran tiger. Unlike most cats, tigers enjoy being in the water. Because many tigers live in hot climates, they will wade into a pond or a river to stay cool. Tigers are good swimmers. They can sometimes cover three or four miles of river at one time. The size of a tiger's territory depends on the number of prey animals within it. In more isolated regions, such as Russia or China, a tiger might roam more than 135 square miles to find an adequate supply of food. Where tigers and prey are more abundant, such as in India, their territory might cover only 10 square miles. A solitary life, a tiger's life, for most. For the most part, it is relaxing. 
It spends 18 to 20 hours of its day resting or sleeping. But when a tiger is on the move, especially on a hunt, that is when the animal springs into action. Tigers are carnivores, which means they eat mostly meat. On the flat plains of Russia and northern China, the Siberian tiger preys upon an elk-like animal called a wapiti. In the jungles, tigers eat monkeys, and in the dry forests of India, tigers most often eat wild boar, peacocks, and wild cattle, along with the sambar. If they are desperate for food, they will eat frogs, crabs, fish, and even por porcupines. Tigers know that water sources are the best places to find prey because all animals must drink. During the day, a hungry tiger will rest and hide near a river or pond. Sometimes tigers will hunt during the day, but they prefer to stalk prey <clears throat> under the cover of darkness. When the time is right, a tiger will silently inch closer to its target until it is about 65 feet away. As soon as it gets near enough, it crouches and then leaps to attack. Once a tiger lands on its target, it sinks its long cannon teeth into the animal's throat, cutting off its air and blood supply. Since tigers are so big, it might seem that they could could easily over, overpower and take away down take down any animal. But a tiger's strength is also its great greatest weakness. It is so large that it can run quickly for only short distances. A tiger's prey is usually smaller and lighter, and animals such as sandbars use their swiftness to outrun, uh, outrun a pursuing tiger. An animal such as a monkey cl can climb high into a tree, far out of the reach of a tiger's paws. Animals such as sandbars and cattle live in herds, and they call out to each other when they sense danger. Tigers have to be persistent when stalking prey. It may take a tiger 20 tries before it gets a meal. When a tiger makes a kill, it drags the carcass to a hiding spot in an area of dense vegetation or sheltering rocks. It does not want to share its meal with other tigers or other animals, and it can take a tiger several hours to gnaw through meat. Its strong teeth allow it to rip through tough meat, and it will even snap and crush bones and eat them too. A tiger will eat for only about an hour at a time before it gets tired and has to rest. Like most cats, Tigers live by themselves. They mark their territories by urinating on trees and bushes. But often the territory of a male and female will overlap. In this case, the male and female will mate, to eat, mate with each other. When a female is ready to mate, she uses her scent to attract males. She also roars and moans to let a male she is ready. Tigers can mate any times during the year, but they usually prefer to do so during the cooler months. About three months after mating, the female tiger gives birth to a litter of two or two to six cubs. When she is ready to give birth, the mother finds a cool, dry hiding spot. This may may be in a den, such as a secluded area of tall grass. Here, her cubs will be protected from harsh weather and dangerous animals. The cubs are tiny at birth. They weigh just two to three pounds and are completely helpless. Their eyes will not open for a week or two. They have no teeth. They get all their nourishment from their mother's milk. The mother licks her cubs so clean so they will not give off any scent that will reveal their location. At about six to eight weeks, the tigers have developed baby teeth and can start to eat meat their mother spring back to the den. Finding enough food for both herself and her cubs exhausts the mother. 
she might have to leave the... Then every day to find meat. While she is gone, the cubs rest quietly. But whenever they are alone, they are always in danger of being killed by other animals such as jackals and leopards. If the mother senses danger, she will grunt or make a squeaking noise to tell her cubs to stay close. At around eight weeks old, cubs start to venture outside the den, but they are always under the watchful eyes of their mother. As the cubs playfully swat at and chase each other, they develop they develop skills that will help them learn how to hunt. Once the cubs are several months old, the mother might let them finish off a kill after she has injured an animal. Only when tigers are are about one and a half years old, they can can they hunt on their own. By this time, their permanent teeth have come in, and they separate from their mother for longer periods of time. At two years old, the cubs are ready to live on their own. A female cub may stay with her mother a little longer than a male cub, but eventually all cubs leave to find their own territory. Brothers might stick together for a while, but they too will eventually go their separate ways. Tigers sometimes take over a territory peacefully. Even the tiger. If a tiger is old and dying, it will not put up a fight when a younger tiger comes into its territory. But other times, tigers fight violently for space. They lash out at each other using its sharp claws, and sometimes one will kill the other. If a male tiger comes across cubs that are not his, he may kill them. Only about half of all cubs survive to adulthood, but those that do have a good chance of living about ten to fifteen years in the wild. In captivity, tigers can live for sixteen to twenty years. A century of suffering. Tigers and humans have a, a long, intertwined history. Tribal cultures of India and other parts of Asia honored the tiger by including it in their art for thousands of years. Historical records show that tigers were brought to Europe during the reign of Greek Emperor Alexander, Alexander the Great in the fourth century B.C. Alexander's rule extended into India, and he and his companions. Captured tigers there and and brought them to Athens, Greece. In the Roman Empire, about of about two thousand years ago, popular gladiator contests often featured matches between humans and tigers. In the thirteenth century, Italian adventurer Marco Polo encountered tigers on his travels to Asia and referred them to them as striped lions. People have always hunted lions for their meat, skin, and bones. However, these hunts killed isolated numbers of tigers and did not negatively affect their overall population. It was not until the 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 use of firearms Firearms became widespread in the 18th century. That tigers began to be a, to be killed in excessive numbers. Shooting tigers became a popular sport among the wealthy in the 19th century. During this time, European nations established colonies throughout Asia. Europeans who traveled to and lived in Asia had never seen wildlife such as tigers, and they took great satisfaction and pride in killing the strong animals. Tiger hunting flourished among native upper classes and European colonial officials, but it was the twentieth century that proved proved most harmful to tiger populations. 
more than most animals, the tiger saw some of the biggest declines in its population in just one century. In the early 1900s, the global tiger population was estimated at 100,000. <clears throat> Tigers could be found as far west as Turkey and throughout Russia, Korea, and Indonesia, and islands of Java and Bali. After World War II ended in 1945, tiger populations already on the decline for decades due to unchecked hunting practices suffered even steeper declines for two primary season, reasons. The human population was growing rapidly and demanded land for villages, cities, and agriculture. To make room for human expansion, tigers were forced to compete among themselves for smaller territories. In addition, hunting became easier as people flew in from flew in from all over the world for the privilege of hunt, killing exotic animals such as tigers. Throughout the 20th century, government officials in Russia, China, and Indonesia actually paid people to kill tigers. As the human population expanded and infringed upon tiger territory, more tigers started to kill humans and domestic animals such as cattle and dogs. The tiger was seen as a threat, and bounties were placed on them. By the 1950s, tigers near the Caspian Sea in Russia were gone. By the 1960s, some tiger species have vanished completely, and total numbers declined to just 2,000 or so. In China, this practice of issuing bounties continued in, until 1977. All tiger subspecies were declared endangered in 1969. In addition to the Caspian tiger, two other tiger subspecies no longer exist. The Balinese tiger, extinct by the 1940s, and the Javan tiger, <clears throat> extinct since the 1980s. These extinctions prompt conservation efforts to start in the 1970s, with the first large-scale effort occurring in India in 1973. Project Tiger established pro protected areas for the tiger throughout the country, and its numbers started to increase. But poachers found it easy to avoid conservation officers. And by the 1990s, the rise in illegal trading of tiger furs and body parts threatened the tiger population once again. Additionally, the human population in India exploded around the same time, straining the boundaries of the preserves and pushing government's resources to the limit. Livestock were often victims uh, of tiger attacks, and farmers retaliated by killing tigers. It wasn't until the turn of the 21 century, 21st century that Project Tiger was able to seem the threat posed by poachers and farmers. A study released in 2006 found that tigers inhabited only 7% of their his historic ranch. Today, the big cats are found in just 13 countries. Efforts to save the tiger are working, and the population has climbed to between 5,000 and 7,000. Still, tigers face threats daily and are thought to live on 40% less land they, than they did only a decade ago. Tigers, for all their dangerous mannerisms, 
have a regal air and can even appear cuddly, with their gentle eyes and soft fur. Throughout the 19th and 20th centuries, as more of the world became familiar with them, the the animals were adopted into human culture across the across the globe. Tigers have long made for popular characters in books, cartoons, and logos. Nineteenth-century British author Rud Rudyard Kipling, who was born in India to British parents, published *The Jungle Book* in 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 eighteen ninety-four. The stories within Kipling's book brought a whole new set of exotic creatures. To life for young girls and boys, Kip Kipling chose to portray portray the, the tiger, Shere Khan, as a mean and vicious villain who was always out to trick and eat the boy, Mowgli. Another British author, A. A. Mil Milne, created a much friendlier tiger named. <clears throat> named Tigger for this for his book Winnie the Pooh, published in nineteen twenty six. Tigger excitedly bounces through Milne's books alongside the characters of Pooh and Piglet. The fun loving Tiger stared in his own big big screen adventure in two thousand. The t the Tigger movie, in which he s sets out to find his family, Tony the Tiger, the spokes animal for Kellogg's cereal Frosted Flakes, is one of the best known American advertising icons. The deep voice Tiger beat out other potential mascots such as a kangaroo and an elephant. For the job through a contest, since 1952, Tony's famous roaring line "They're great" has endeared him to generations of children. Because tigers are powerful and can be fierce and competitive, they are popular choices as mascots for sport teams, both the amateur and prof professional. And Mayor Legu. Baseball. The Tigers of Detroit, Michigan, have used a tiger as their mascot since the turn of the 20th century. In the National Football League, the Cincinnati Bengals have tiger stripe helmets. More than anyone else, Las Vegas entertainers Siegfried and Roy have made the white tiger famous. These magicians have used white tigers at, in their act since the since the nineteen eighties, exposing thousands of people each year to the beauty and majesty of this rare animal. Knowing the tiger, scientists have been intrigued. By tigers since the mid 1900s, and continue to dis uncover new information about the animal's habitat requirements and behavior patterns. The panthera cats, including tigers, lions, and jaguars, are thought to have branched away from the other felidae cats five million years ago. Tigers likely originated in East Asia, and fossils of The early animals have been found that date from five hundred thousand to two million years years old. Tigers adapt and adapted and spread throughout Asia wherever prey and land were available. When the global climate was warmer and lower sea levels exposed land, they traveled to the Eden. Indonesian islands. Tiger fossils have also been found in Japan and on a land bridge that once existed between Asia and North America. The first person to regularly study tigers in the wild was conservationist and zoologist George Galler, 
this American scientist published the first book on tiger behavior, *The Deer and the Tiger*, in 1967. For months, he studied tigers and other animals in India's Kanha National Park. Scaler first observed many beha behaviors. Now commonly known about tigers, for example, he determined that tiger cubs suffer high <clears throat> mortality r rates. He also noted that male tigers were highly t territorial and competitive. In addition, Scaler observed tigers to be solitary creatures. Much of this early research helped later conservation efforts. Since it was known how tigers behave socially, how much territory they need, and how many tigers need to be born in order to sustain a population, today tigers research centers largely on the animal's ability to survive. Scientists continue to study tigers' behavior, habitats, and populations, and know anything that could harm the animals. To track tigers, scientists use many different methods. Trained eyes can look for tiger markings, urine spray on trees, paw prints, and fecal droppings. Modern technology allows scientists to place remote cameras, cameras in tigers' habitats, habitats and tigers. <clears throat> Walking past the devices trigger the flashes. If scientists want to follow one particular tiger, it is captured using a snare, then then tranquilized and fitted with a radio collar. There are also plans to introduce tigers born in captivity into the wild, while tiger populations are endangered. But up to four times as many tigers live in captivity. It is not easy to introduce a tiger into the wild, as it needs to quickly learn the necessary survival skills. Some rare South China tigers have been bred in captivity and now live on a reserve in South Africa. Chinese scientists hope that the tigers will be relocated to China by 2008 to coincide with the Olympic Games in Beijing, when the world's attention could be turned to the country. Despite despite efforts to conserve the tiger, it still faces many threats. The tiger's biggest threat is not other animals, but humans. Humans encroach upon tiger habitats, overhunt traditional tiger prey, and perhaps most significantly, continue to kill tigers for their skin and body parts. Under the Convention. On international trade in endangered species of wild fauna and flora treaty, which was signed by 170 countries in 1973, it is illegal to trade and sell tiger body parts. However, poachers still sell fur skins, teeth, and claws. Tiger bones, urine, teeth, and gallbladders are thought for use in making some Asian Asian medicines. Tigers are today protected by law in all countries in where they which they live. However, enforcing those laws is another matter. It is impossible to watch every tiger. All of the time, and poachers take advantage of this. They accept the risk risk of being caught because they are unwilling to give up the the thousands of dollars they can earn for selling tiger body parts. The the untimely death of one tiger can affect the entire population in an area. A female that is killed. Is one less female that can breed. If a mother is killed, her young cubs will surely die. 
A male taken out of his territory leaves fewer choices for females when it comes time to mate. Many tiger populations are isolated from one another due to spikes in human population. Half the world's population, more than three billion people, is found in the thirteen countries in which tigers live. Forests and other traditional tiger habitats are routinely cleared for homes and farmland. People hunt the same animals that tigers do. Tigers are forced to move into smaller areas, which means that animals from the same family may end up breeding with each other. This results in sickly tigers with genetic problems caused by inbreeding. Governments, researchers, and organizations are taking many measures to protect the tiger. One way to do so is to protect its habitat and the species it feeds upon. At times, villagers who live within wildlife reserves are encouraged to relocate. Relocate the. The government gives them new land and resources such as drinking water, electricity, and health care, which they might not otherwise have access to. Many protection measures center on the farmers who kill tigers that attack livestock. Conservationists encourage farmers to lock up their livestock at night instead of letting them roam free. Tigers are less unlike, less likely to come near a village if they cannot find an easy food source source there. Governments also pay villagers to leave tigers alone instead of shooting them. Many organizations are dedicated to conserving tiger populations. The Save the Tiger Fund Foundation was. Formed in formed in nineteen ninety five and is supported by Exxon Mobil, the U S Fish and Wildlife Service, and the Disney Foundation. Other organizations include the Siberian Tiger Con Conservation Association and Wildlife Warriors Worldwide. The good news is that even with increases in human population, there are still reserves dedicated to tigers. Tiger populations appear to be healthiest in far eastern Russia and India. Southeast Asia also has the has the capability to keep tiger populations stable or to increase them. Throughout its history, the tiger has shown a remarkable will to survive. It even managed to survive throughout the twentieth century, when hunting and poaching reduced its numbers to the point of extinction. With some help from conservationists, it is hoped. Hope that the tiger can find a safe, valued place in this shrinking world. Animal tale: How the tiger got its stripes. One day, a farmer and his water buffalo were plowing a rice paddy. The farmer took a lunch break and rested beside a tree. The water buffalo lazily drank from a pond, but soon became alarmed. He could sense a predator approaching. Before he knew it, a tiger appeared before him. "Don't be afraid," the tiger said. "I come in peace. I I've been watching you, and I wonder why you obey the farmer's command each day. You are much larger than he is, and you could run away or even trample him." What kind of power does he hold over you? I don't know about his power," the water buffalo said. "All I know is that he says he has this thing called wisdom, and as long as he has wisdom, I shall never be free." The tiger thought for a moment. "I should like to have some of that wisdom," 
You see, I already have great power in the <clears throat> in the forest, but I will like even more. Instead of having to wait and sneak up on animals with wisdom, I could simply approach them and kill them whenever I want to. I could have a great feast every day. The water buffalo replied, "Don't you? Why don't you ask the farmer about his wisdom?" Maybe he would be happy to share it with you. The tiger approached the farmer. Oh, wise man! I see the wisdom that you have, and the great power, and the power you hold over creatures. <clears throat> I will like some of that too. Would you like? Would you share it with me? I don't have the wisdom right here. The farmer said. I left it up at the house. I can get it for you. Oh, that would be wonderful," the tiger said. "Could it? Could I come with you? No, I would prefer that you stay here. But I am concerned that while while I'm gone, you might try to eat my water buffalo. Would you mind if I tied you to this tree while you wait?" The tiger, so desperate to receive the farmer's wisdom, agreed. The farmer used strong twine to tie up the tiger. The farmer went to his house and got some straw. He he brought it back to the tree, set it underneath the tiger, and lit it on fire. What are you doing? The tiger cried. I thought you were going to bring me wisdom. Wisdom is so powerful that only I can hold it. Only I can hold it. The farmer said, "I cannot trust you with it." The tiger owl howled as the fire roared around him. Finally, the fire burned through the rope, and the tiger leaped away to the forest to lick his wounds. The burning ropes had seared into his fur, and the dark scars never went away. And that is how the tiger got its stripes.